That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I ask. Um, today we had some. I'm not going to call it sad news. That would be disrespectful. <laughs> um, <laughs> news. We had we news. some news. Phil Spector, one of the titans of producers of all time, passed away today. I am told of COVID. There's also a lunatic murderer who murdered one of my favorite B movie actresses, Lena Clarkston, which is freaking insane how that could have happened. Stabbed her to death at his house. That's, and the crazy thing is, he was crazy the whole time, everybody. <laughs> he was crazy the whole time. <laughs> and somehow, he continually managed to make amazing sounding music. You talk about the birth of like creating, using the studio as an instrument in itself. This guy is one of the founding fathers of that. The Phil Spector Wall of Sound was famous, but Phil Spector really took that, what was afforded by te technological improvements, and created the Wall of Sound. Not the Pumpkins Wall of Sound, not guitars. The yeah. wall of sound <laughs> using all of the different instruments in an orchestration type mix and spreading them out in the mix so that it sounds like it almost sounds like a 3D experience to the listener. Hmm. Well, that's kind of his legacy, and uh, I don't want to harp on it too much, but we have to do some of these songs. I love, I love them, and I love his production on them. Um, well, the first one I got pulled up is a. Hopefully a crowd pleaser for James. John <laughs> Lennon, Instant Karma. Instant Karma. So this is John Lennon's, I believe, first big hit after the Beatles broke up. Um, this did not come out on an album. It was recorded as a single, standalone single with Phil Spector. 1970. This is uh, live on TV, but the, the mix you're going to hear is a, a remastered version of the uh, uh, studio mix. So you're getting the, okay. the Phil Spector thing. All right, here we go. This is karma's gonna get you. Gonna knock you right on the head. You better get yourself together. Pretty soon you're gonna be dead. somebody crocheting in the background blindfolded that's yoko i assumed as much <laughs> <laughs> because the think of the title of the song instant karma right okay and think about how we yeah you ever heard the, the the term like uh you're weaving your own web or whatever i think that's the symbolism behind it i guess i still i i'm still not putting it all together i, I don't yeah. understand I did my best. The Yoko haters are going to say, nope, she's an idiot and doesn't, uh, nothing makes sense. <laughs> I did my best, y'all. Uh, yeah, yeah. John Lennon loved her. I love her too. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> As for the music, like, yeah. I was thinking back to the, like, the Roy Orbison video that we shot, right? Because I, I think that that's, like, kind of, you're talking about the change in sound that Phil Spector kind of, help to bring about right yeah and yeah it's it's really cool like it does it the, the way you said it there's like space between the instruments instead of it just being one microphone microphone in a room yeah. and the advancement of technology makes that make sense like it's 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 really cool to like 
kind of look at it in that way and kind yeah. of think about the early days of being like, oh yeah, we can put more microphones, we can move things around and we can yep. we can create a new way for music to sound without really changing the music itself just by changing the way we record it. Absolutely. And that's that that's kind of cool. Like yeah. there there's a part where he he I think he like pulls down he doesn't play the piano for a second or he pulls away from the mic and like you hear the drums but they feel like they're further behind Way you back yeah and instead yep. of like when you're just if you're just recording for one speaker where you wouldn't really get that effect anyway right no. you know so the, it was really cool to kind of kind of hear it that way and cool. the other thing i would say is, is i haven't listened to the beatles or john lennon in a while mm. and i'm just like man just forget how good of a musician that guy was God when you don't it. listen to that shit for a while. You're like, wow. Like, it- <laughs> oh man. The Beatles are the truth, buddy. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and I love his shouty vocals on this. Um, mm-hmm. the distortion and, and when he shouts is great. Okay. Very cool. Let's get back to it. Hey, you are. Come on. This is calm is going to get you. you. Gonna knock you off your feet. Better recognize your brothers. Everyone you meet. Why in the world are we here? Surely not to live in pain and fear. Why on earth are you there? When you're everywhere, come and get your share. Um, what I like about this from a production standpoint is the arrangement is very skeletal. There's a piano, there's a drummer, there's backup singers, there's a bassist, right? Yeah. It's just a few instruments, right? And Phil Spector's biggest claim to fame is taking a much bigger uh, ensemble and making that sound amazing. But I chose to do this one first because... By having the, the arrangement be skeletal, you can hear the distinct production flourishes on each aspect of it. Uh-huh. is John Lennon writing another chapter in the Beatles Bible, providing a secular vision, a secular, uh, <laughs> a secular way of thinking about your place in the world and your place in relation mm-hmm. to other people. I have a completely, <laughs> no, you should keep that. Okay. I'm just going to go a completely different way. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and side with the Yoko haters on this one. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on with her crocheting blind, hey, but I hey, find hey, it hey, wildly hey. distracting. And anytime the camera zooms in on it, I stop hearing the music and I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this? So like, yeah. I feel like I need to just listen to the song without the video. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're all lucky she didn't sing on that song. That's all I got to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, you man. Get like... me on the Yoko Hey train. Let's do the songs where she sings. Hell no! no. <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> Run, John. Why? I don't, I don't know. Like, <laughs> here's the question: What's worse, her knitting or Megadeth skydiving? Megadeth What's skydiving. Mo- <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping that. Keeping that line. Uh, you, you know what I've learned about you this last year is you are much more visual. I always, I mean, I know, I knew you were a visual guy. You're a movie guy, of course, yeah. right? But man, the way that you let visuals distract you from the song when you don't dig it, it it's yeah. very, it's very interesting. And so I, I kind of, I'm going to tell you your own advice. If it was bugging you, you should have stopped watching. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, uh, I did my best, everybody. I did my best to defend what was going on with uh, Yoko's symbolism there. But cards down on the table, I agree with him. (laughs) All right. I agree with you, man. It's distracting as hell. Um, I don't watch this clip. (laughs) I I listen to this song. I won't watch it. Yeah. All right, (laughs) I'm Justin. That's James.